This time on Tornado Titans, I'm in the Texas Panhandle looking at a beautiful dryline supercell. Hello everybody and welcome. My name is Rachel Sanner and today we're going to be in one of my absolute favorite places to storm chase, the Texas Panhandle, chasing my absolute favorite pattern, the dry line. And we're going to break down what makes supercells tick, especially along the dry line and a lot of other things. So are you ready? Let's get started. Now my first view of this storm is not very good admittedly, not very good at all. There's a lot of rain between me and the updraft, but you can see the wall cloud, you can see the lowering, you can see the scud rising up. This is all signs that you look for to say, hey, look at me. That's what the supercell's doing, so that's what we're gonna do. Now underneath this supercell, underneath this wall cloud, there's a lot of dust that gets kicked up here. This is, I, I don't know. I don't know what this is. Is this a tornado? Is it a gust tornado? I don't know. I can't tell from my vantage point. Other chasers who are closer to this are reporting a tornado. Maybe it was a tornado, but this is one of those things where I just did not report a tornado because I was completely unsure. Okay, my view is getting way worse. It is just like there's a lot of rain beginning to fall between me and the updraft. I've got to think what I mean. This, it's time to reposition. It's pretty obvious. I'm losing visual. So I want to get south of this thing and get a better view. When I chase supercells, I like to be just to the right of the storm's path. So if it's moving northeast, I like to be east of it. Or if it's like this and moving southeast, I want to be south of it. That gives me a good view of what's going on underneath the updraft and a great vantage point to see the whole storm structure. This is an amazing view. I, I mean, this is textbook positioning. You can see the whole storm. You can see all the processes, incredible lightning. You can also see the storm just starting to do that thing it does when it produces a tornado. You can see the RFD, the roof link downdraft wrapping around the mesocyclone. You can see the low level rotation increasing. We could be getting ready to see a tornado right here in front of us. This storm doesn't know exactly what it's trying to do because it almost produced a tornado, but it didn't quite. So I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna stick with this storm, obviously. It's the only show in town. There's a lot of storms developing around it, but I think it's got a chance to do this one more time. I've got this new position like set up. I've got the camera set up and this storm doesn't look that great right now, admittedly. It doesn't look like it's trying to produce a tornado. I'm gonna time lapse this and then it's time to get east again to try to get a view to wait and see if it can do it one more time. Now, here's the first rule of storm chasing. Expect the unexpected. I'm driving along the road. I'm thinking, okay, w this storm doesn't look that great. I look over, I, you know, I look over at the mirror and I go, oh my gosh, there's a funnel. And then I look back and it's a tornado. This storm is producing the weakest looking tornado I've ever seen, but it's a tornado and <laughs> I've got the camera pointed at it. Maybe, not that great. So let this be a lesson to you kids. Anytime there's a mezzo and it's still there rotating, don't take your eyes off of it. You know, it's golden rule of storm chasing. I broke it. I pretty much missed a tornado while I was repositioning to get a better view of what looks like a new mezzo forming. So let's see what it does. Okay, I'm actually starting to get nervous because the storm is still rotating, it's still tornado worn, and it's right at Perryton. It's coming into town. Anytime a tornado worn storm approaches one of these small towns on the Great Plains, it, it, it rises some nerves in you because while I love storm chasing and I love supercells, I really like these things over open land and this thing is not over open land anymore. So I'm driving to get into position to film what may be a tornado getting ready to happen over Perryton. 
And, and all this nervous energy, I look over and there's Brandon Goforth, one of my oldest chase partners, my oldest friends. He's an incredible guy, one of the best photographers you're ever going to see, and he is also on this storm. So Perryton dodged a bullet largely. This storm did produce what looked to be a very weak tornado with some very minor damage in town, but anytime one of these storms moves into a town, it just focuses you. You're like, well, I gotta report what I'm seeing, I gotta say what the storm's doing, all these things. And luckily today, the damage wasn't that bad. As myself and Brandon watched the storm right off into the sunset, it was obviously weakening at this point. This was its last gasp of something interesting as other storms started basically taking the energy from this one and it was dying. It was just really cool to talk with him, talk with one, the founder, co-founder of Tornado Titans and just enjoy some time under a storm with them again. Maybe, maybe we can uh, get together for some chasing next year. So this may be my last chase of the year. I don't really know if there's going to be another opportunity. The pattern really kind of goes away for a while, the severe storm pattern, and there may be something on the high plains, but that's never guaranteed. So if this was my last chase of the year, it was very eventful, very interesting, and I'm glad I got a dryline supercell this year once again.